tell you this right now folks this is a good case in point when it comes to uh music that's broadcast on the show you, you we have a, a set of uh recommendations and rules up there which are subject to uh that all songs are subject to our approval for broadcast on the show one of the guidelines is that the song should be five minutes or less this song was actually five minutes and 30 seconds i played it on the show today it's a case in point do you know what's going to happen when it goes over the limit? So uh, it's the way it is. Sorry. Don't upset Rich. Yeah, don't, don't upset, upset rich. rich. That's exactly right. Okay, uh, those are our three songs. Let's go to our first panelist this time around. Dave, your thoughts on this one, sir? I like the song. Uh, I like the backing track. But to me, the singer seemed to be... It, well, it should have been with a different band. It, it needed another singer, um, and it seemed seemed a little strange to me. Uh, oh, it's gone now. That's okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like the song itself, and um, it, it had a good feel to it, good funky feel to it, and it built up and it built up. Um, but the, the singer just seemed a little bit strange to me. Uh, from a production value, did it strike any, uh, hit any marks with you there? Uh, what what did you think about that? You know, strictly uh, produced right, uh, the levels, yeah, levels it, good on everything? It sounded great. Everything to me sounded spot on. And it, and it kind of built up and built up. And to the end, uh, okay, it was, a bit, it was a bit too long, but they could have faded that end bit out. Um, it was a little bit long-winded, and I felt the... The, the singer should have come in towards the end, a bit, bit of improvisation. Yeah, there were a lot but, of comments in the chat room that uh, it felt like it was long. Do you think that had yeah. to do with the the just the, the instrumental out? Yeah, I, th I think it was okay. Perhaps it could have been faded out a little bit sooner. Um, and that, to be honest, they could they could chop it down a bit. But to me. I felt that the, the the singer should have come in with a with a few ad libs towards the end, because it it, it felt the singer just disappeared, and uh, and and it relying on the musicians it, to just finish the track off. It was kind of like the singer went off for a costume change in yeah, the middle of the set. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. <laughs> it was a bit strange, and I just I just felt that it was uh, it, it could have had a little bit more, perhaps a little bit bit of grit there in the vocal. Okay, well, that makes makes perfect sense. Uh, Ian, what do you think uh, about uh, the track? I mean, you heard it as well as everybody else did. Your thoughts on it? 
grooving. Like, like, yeah, I was sitting here grooving away to that. Really, really nice groove. The drums, the bass really worked well together. Great sounds and all. That's the snare sound I was looking for on the first song. Uh, the drums were just crisp. The snare had that nice snap to it. Uh, the bass just locked in perfectly and just cut through nicely. What a great groove. Uh, the guitars, they, they sounded awesome. They were set in the right places. And, and the, the performances were, were just top. Um, for the vocals, I kind of know what Dave means, but it, the whole track gave me the vibe of, is it Alabama 5 who done the Sopranos soundtrack? I could sort of woke, yeah. I think, think it was. Um, it sort of had that sort of vibe for me, which was, was nice. I actually enjoyed it. And once I got used to the singer's voice being there, it, it worked. Um, two obvious things that really hit me about the track was, yes, it was far too long. Um, too many solos. We know you can play. You've just done some really nice playing. Don't milk it. Uh, and secondly, when the first keyboard solo came in, it was just a touch too loud. Uh, wasn't expecting it, which was nice to have that sort of dimension come in, but it was just far too loud uh, and, and overpowered the rest of the track. But overall, loved it. Um, and this is a track that, even though it is long, you could do, easily do a nice radio edit on it and have a long version on an album. So do you agree with uh, Dave in that uh, towards the end it, it could have been faded out or the singer could have uh, come in with some ad-libs over, the, over that part of it? The fade-out that's actually on the, the track I thought was a bit too quick. Um, so, yeah, they need to extend it out a little bit and uh, just do a radio edit on it, you know, get it down to about three and a half, four minutes, and um, that would be played on the radio, I think. But, you know, for the album track, if you want to show off on it, go for your lives. That makes sense. Sounds uh, sounds like a good take on that song. Appreciate your thoughts on it. Let's go to our next panelist, in-house panelist, Tom Chianti. Tom, my friend, I'm sure you've got some thoughts on this one. I liked it. Um, I still think there could have been, again, no, yeah, you know, it's one of those songs where I'm hanging between, the mix was good, the mix was good. And that carried over most of any rough spots. So, you know, being a producer engineer myself, if you give me a, a well thought out production and a, a really decent mix, it, you know, yeah, I'm happy with it. So what did you think, uh, the details on the production, did it have enough air in it for you? Did it have enough space between notes, as you like to say? I mean, not as much as I would like. I, I mean, but again, um, the type of thing I'm, I'm hoping for, you, you know, you either have to be very good with your home gear or you're only going to get it with um, um, using a big board in a big studio. Yeah. All right, uh, now comes that time of the week, guys. You guys are going to have to decide on a song of the week. Uh, I know it's a very trying time for you guys to be able to do this, but uh, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to talk amongst yourselves and uh, let me know what you think the song of the week is this week on MSI. Well, I, I think, it, for me, the third one was, oh, you know. Let me tell you who the third one is before we do that. I, sh I always forget to do this, don't I? Who's the third one, Rich? The third one is a song called You Got Me Spinning by Jiguma. J-I-G-U-M-A. Jiguma. All right, guys, I leave it up to you. Song of the week is? I would, For me, um, it's got to be number three. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah it's got to be number three. It's, 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 it is the best produced. It's the best mixed. It's, it's probably the best song overall as well, from my opinion. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's it just comes out at you. So it's no, yeah, the most right. coherent, coherent. So no arguments, yeah. no arguments amongst you. Then no fist fights are going to break out on this one. Absolutely no, we're not on the first show. <laughs> I'd like to. I mean, you know, can we start we, one, Tom? We'll just find the the authors of one and two and beat them up. <laughs> oh, right. be fair, really. Well, be fair in what regard, uh, Ian? I mean, uh, what's fair about it? Do you, you pick number three? Uh, is it, I mean, wh what do you mean be fair? 
Well, you know, we're not going to go and beat them up. That's, I mean, that's a tad harsh. We've just dissed their songs on a live broadcast. We don't have to physically hurt them. So there, Tommy, forget about it. Well, OK, well, it was just an idea, and it can get knocked down, and my feelings won't get hurt. I'll just meet, you know, Ian in a dark alley one day. Now that I'm looking forward to. <laughs> All right, guys, so number three, You Got Me Spinning by Jiguma is our song of the week for this, the premiere episode of MSI. Thanks for being with us this week. Until next week, my name's Rich Wildman saying so long. <laughs>